Lord, I just want to thank you for your presence in our midst here today, Lord. I just want to thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have put a desire in our hearts to know you more. And we thank you, Lord, that by your Spirit you will come today and do what you want to do in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 This is going to be a short one, so you'll be happy about that. Uh, you could just turn, please, to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And if I was going to give this a title, the title that I would give to this would be, It's Only Half Time, The Match Is Not Over Yet. How about that one? Yeah, it's only half time. The match is not over yet. Oh, glory to God. The match is not over yet. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm just going to read um, some of the, uh, the verses of this chapter. And I just want to give you a little backdrop to what happened before I start reading verse 1. And that is that um, Judah has a king called Jehoshaphat. And he's a king who's seeking God. He's a king who wants to, uh, he wanted to restore the glory of God into the nation of Judah. And so because of that, he began to put a lot of reforms into place in the nation. He began to tear down all the altars that were erected to the false gods, and he wanted to reestablish worship to the one true God. Now, as a result of that, I want you to pay attention to that, because this is, this is what happens when you make a decision to follow Jesus Christ. This is what happens when you make a decision to commit yourself to God, to put all the other idols that used to operate in your life, to put them to one side. This is what happens. Now just pay attention because when we begin to, to move into the things of God, don't be surprised when this sort of things begin to happen. Second Chronicles 20 verse 1, it says, I better put my glasses on so I can read this properly. <laughs> That's not what the verse says, but I better put my glasses on. <laughs> it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them beside the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Now this is after he had set his heart to bring Judah back to worshiping the one true God. So it wasn't that after he decided to do that, then the blessing just flowed from heaven and he, had a, you know, he lived happily ever after. As soon as he set his heart to bring the nation back to worship the one true God, this is what happened. The other nations began to be stirred up against him to begin to come to attack Judah. And in verse two it says, Oh, that's a big echo there. Okay. Then some came and they told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask God from the, to, help, to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand, is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Hallelujah. That's just the first. I don't want to raise the first, but there's just three things that I just want to mention quite quickly here this morning because I want us to, to put these things into practice. The first thing, like I said, I wanted to, to see that when we begin to step out to make a commitment to follow God, the enemy begins to be stirred up against us because what happened to Joseph at the moment he set his heart, like I said, to return to the worship of the one true God, the nations around him begin to be stirred up against him. And it's, a, it's amazing, isn't it, that um, when they, he heard the news that the nations were stood up against him, the Bible says that Jehoshaphat was afraid. Wow. I mean, how many times have you faced situations that have overwhelmed you? Bad news has come. It could be regarding health. Sometimes it's finances. You know, those letters keep coming through the, the door. Sometimes, the, 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 you know, the bailiffs are there. There are all sorts of things, problems that are happening in our family life. Sometimes we face situations that are overwhelming to us. And we're afraid, just the same way that Joseph was afraid. But it's important to remember, the first thing that he did, he was afraid, but in spite of his fear, the Bible says that he turned to seek God. Now, this is one of the things that I want us to be, we need to begin to press in, in the area of our prayer life. We're all, in one way or another, we face situations that are overwhelming. However, God knows that he has the answer to those situations. And what he wants us to do in those situations is to turn to him. And you see what the first thing, when Jehoshaphat began his prayer, the first thing that he said, he didn't come to God and he says, Oh God, look at all these enemies, they're coming to destroy me, they're coming to destroy us and all of it. What was the first thing he said? He began to exalt God. He began to put God in the place where he should be. He began to declare that God was ruler over all the nations. And that meant that he was ruler over all those people from wherever they were coming from, from Moab or from Ammon, wherever they were. 
that was the first thing he did when he came into God's presence. And it's the same thing for us, whatever situation that we face, because I want us to, to read, this. see these stories that we're reading, they're not just stories, these things actually happened. You know, this is not Spider-Man or Batman and Superman, you know, it's not Snow White or the Seven Dwarfs, this is things that actually happened, this has happened. There was a king called Jehoshaphat, the nations came against, they wanted to destroy Israel, and this is how this king responded to this attack. So this is why it's important that when we read these things, we can apply them to our lives. So that when we hear bad news, we hear things that cause us to be overwhelmed, we can respond in a way that God wants us to respond. And the first thing that he, where he wants us to do, he wants us to come to him in prayer. And then when we come to him, he doesn't want us to come. There are times when we do come to God and we lament about our situation, but he wants us to recognize who he is. So the first thing that Jehoshaphat said is that you are God over the nations, including these nations that are coming against us. So when there's a sickness, when it comes, when we come to God, we need to come to him and say, you are God over this sickness. You are God over this financial situation. You are God over this attack, whether it's at work, wherever it's come from. You have to acknowledge who he is. He is God over that situation. And from that place of acknowledging who he is, Jehoshaphat continues his prayer. I'm going to skip some of the, the verses, but you can read the whole chapter because of the time. I'm going to skip some of the verses. So I'm going to move straight on to verse 12 now in, in chapter 20. And he goes on, he says, O oh, you, are God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Hallelujah. And I'm going up to verse uh, 15 now. And he said, listen, all you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Sorry, now this is, this is the prophetic word. Okay, so just moving on from the second part. What one, the, the other thing that uh, Joseph does is that he acknowledges that they are powerless against the enemies. Sometimes when we're faced with this situation, what he could have done, what he could have done normally and naturally is that if he heard that there were armies coming against him, he could have gone to hire some other armies to fight against them as well, to see who's got the, the greatest number of soldiers to win the battle. But he acknowledges that we don't have the ability, we don't have the power to withstand this army. But he says, our eyes are on you. We're looking to you to come and intervene in this situation that we are powerless to do anything about. So when God tur when Joseph turns the problem over to God, what happens? I, I, sorry, I, I can't read through all the verses because of the time. But a prophet then rises up. You see, where there's faith, God begins to speak. Amen. The prophet then rose up and he began to say to the people of Judah and to Jehoshaphat, he said, listen to what God is going to do. I, I'm going to skip some things because we don't have enough time. I want us to do this this morning. We're going to do it ourselves. Where God sees faith. You know, the Bible says that we, it is impossible to please God without faith. When he sees faith, God springs into action. And as soon as Jehoshaphat begins to declare the greatness of God, as soon as he begins to declare that God is able to solve this situation, the word of the Lord comes to a prophet. And he begins to tell the people of Judah and Jehoshaphat exactly what God is going to do. So I'm going to skip through some of those things. I think that the story is familiar to most of us, the things that he said. So I'm just going to read a few of the verses from verse 15. So this is what the prophet is saying. He says, Listen, all you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Amen. Tomorrow go down against them, and he, he begins to tell them what he's going to do. I'm skipping, so I'm going to skip some verses again. I'm going to verse 17 now. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, God against them, for the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ha glory to God. The first thing I wanted to say to emphasize is on prayer. We prayer, prayer. We have to learn how to pray. We have to learn how to pray when we face difficulties. We have to learn how to pray when we face opposition. We have to learn how to pray when we are overwhelmed. We have to learn how to pray when we don't feel prayer. Prayer. There's a power that God releases when we begin to pray. There's a connection. And it's all because of the love that God has for us. You know, prayer is all about having a relationship with God. It's all about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you engage in that relationship, God begins to release his power through your lives. The word of God comes, and the prophet, this is the second thing I want to emphasize here, the word of God. We need to have God's revelatory word. We need to have it in the situation that we're going to be facing in the years of hell. We need to have revelation of what God wants us to do. Now, it, God is not always going to tell us to stand still and see his salvation. There are times when he's going to tell us to do things. But in this particular instance, this is the word that came to the nation at that time. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He says, stand still because God is going to fight this battle for you. That's a strategy that God has given to the nation. There's a strategy that God has for us in every situation that we face. You know, sometimes when sickness comes, God heals through medicine. 
It takes, it take, might take a long time, it might take a process, but that is sometimes the way that God brings his healing. Sometimes he heals instantaneously. Sometimes he heals through things like changing your diet, changing your lifestyle. There are different ways in which God can bring his divine healing. But for us as individuals, we have to know the way that God wants to bring that healing. It's the same thing in financial difficulty. Sometimes God brings money miraculously. I've always said to God, why don't you do it the easy way, Lord? Just deposit some money into my account and that will be it. But he says, no, I've got a better way. It's a more difficult way, it's a harder way, but it's a better way for you. And that we're going to come to that when we come to that later. But there are different ways in God will prosper us through our work, through businesses, through investments. There are different ways. You have to hear what God is saying. There is a way for each and every one of us as individuals to prosper. God has ways of restoring broken relationships. He does it different ways. It doesn't matter what we face. He always has a way. But we have to hear the way that he wants to do it in our lives. There's a specific way that he wants to hear us do it. And this again, it all boils down to our relationship with him. Prayer, it boils down to our relationship with him. Our ability to hear the word of God in the situation that we're in, it boils down to our relationship with him. It's all about Jesus Christ and how we choose to walk with him. So the first thing is prayer. The second thing is the word. And the third thing is, is just following on from what um, Pastor David has been um, teaching us over the last couple of weeks is praise and worship. Now I want to, uh, This is where we're going to do some homework now. We're going to have a quick test. You know, Pastor David, I think he taught us seven different types of praise and worship. So you can open your notes. It's an open exam. This one's an open exam. I didn't know that any open exams existed until I came here. You know, that you can go into an exam with a textbook and you can refer. In Nigeria, you don't do that. You have to cram everything into your brain and then you go into the exam. But here, you have open exams where you can open the textbook and you can refer to it. So this is an open exam. If you took any notes those days, you can go back to the notes because praise and worship, again, it releases the power of God on our behalf, into our situation and into our circumstances. Now, this is the, the response of the people and the king when the word of God came. Now, me, now, bear in mind the fact that they haven't gone out to fight yet, so those enemies are still coming against them. So as far as their circumstances are concerned, nothing has changed. It's all the same. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm just going to read a few uh, verses now. This is relating to uh, the praise and worship aspect of, our, of um, how we, we, we can break through it in terms of our situations. Now in verse 18 it says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they bowed before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Now, who, who, you've got your notes open now. What kind of worship is that? Bowing down, kneeling down. What kind of worship is that one? Barak, ah, oh, this man is, he's not the head deacon for nothing. <laughs> he got it first time, Barak, yes, hallelujah, Jehoshaphat and the whole nation, they worship, they bow down and they began to worship God. Don't forget, nothing has changed, those enemies are still coming against them, but in faith, they begin to bow down and worship God, believing that he's going to do exactly what he's promised them, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 19, it says, Then the, the Levites of the children of the, the Kohalites and the children of the Korahites, they stood up to praise the Lord, uh, the Lord God of Israel, with voices loud and high. How about that one? What's that one? Voices loud and high. Summer, yes? Shabak, yes? And the Halal? Yes? Any others? Yeah, that's it. The halal and the hala and the shabak. Yes. And the other one that was mentioned as well. That's it. loud voices. Now, I'm t Sama. We're going, now, I'm telling you this because we're going to do this when I've finished. We're all going to do this when we finish. Like I said, it's how, how is God leading you? I saw somebody kneeling before the altar this morning, praising God. How is God leading you? Is he asking you to bow? Is he asking you to shout with a loud voice? Is he asking you to raise your hands? It's individual. And if you say that I can't hear from God, now this is the day to start beginning to hear from God. Because the days are coming when you need to hear from God. You have to hear from God. It won't be optional any longer. Because the ministry has passed from the hands of the pastors at the front. It has passed into our hands now. The ministry has passed into our hands now. It's not in the hands of the pastors anymore. The preaching of the gospel, the signs and the wonders, the miracles, the healings, they have passed into our hands now. So we have to be able to hear God the same way that those prophets were hearing God, the same way that Jehoshaphat was able to hear God, was able to turn to God. Now the ministry has passed into our hands. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 20, it says, And they rose early in the morning, and they went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. 
And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Sorry, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, who should sing praise, the beauty of holiness. Sorry, who, and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were singing. Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, and uh, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Hallelujah. The enemies, all those enemies, were defeated by God. And in verse, uh, I'm just going to go on to some others now. Verse 20, it says, when they came to Jerusalem, so they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord. So which one is that one? Zana, hey, Brother Dele got that one. Hallelujah. Give him a round of applause. His wife is clapping for him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Time, I can't go into everything. I'm just, I, can't, I want to stop because I want us to, um, like I said, we're going to put all of these things into practice. The prayer, the word, the praise, and the worship. You know, at the beginning I said, it's just half time. And what was the rest of it? What did I say? The match is not over yet. Glory to God. Some people are listening. Hey, man. Istanbul, 2005. Football fans, they know what I'm talking about. George, please, ladies, don't switch off now. This, is, this applies to all of us. Istanbul, 2005. AC Milan were taking on Liverpool in the final of the European Cup. Half time, the score was 3 0 against Liverpool. As far as everyone was concerned, that was the end of the game. The match was over, AC Milan had won, Liverpool had lost, that was it. But what happened in the second half? Well, they came out in the second half, Liverpool scored a goal. Does anyone remember who scored that goal? <laughs> oh my goodness, Steven Gerrard. He scored the first goal. At that point, they thought, well, that was just a consolation goal. They've got one goal back, it's not too bad. Then they scored another goal, it was 3-2. The opposition began to panic. They scored another goal. They equalized. It was 3-3. No one could believe it. They went into extra time, penalties, and Liverpool won the match. One newspaper described it as the miracle of Istanbul. That's what I was described. And as I was preparing this morning, God said to tell the people this. It's only half time. The match is not ended yet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. The devil is telling you that the match is over because it's 3 0, it's 4 0, however which way you want to look. He says that it's over, it's gone, it's finished. You're too old, nothing's going to happen anymore, it's not going to happen, you're not going to get out of this situation. He's telling you to give up. Give up, give in, it's all over. But God is saying, no, it's not over. It's half time. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And in the second half, we win. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the second half, we win. Yes. Hallelujah. But we're only going to win if, if we pray. We're only going to win if we listen to the word of God, if we can hear the word of God and obey that word. We're only going to win if we praise and worship him when it's not, it's, it's not convenient to do so. Let me put it that way. You know, salvation has come to us freely, but Jesus Christ paid the price with his life for it. You know, those footballers, they, they, they train every day, they get paid a lot of money, but if they had just got out in the second half and just given up, that would have been, they would have lost the match. And it's the same thing for us. You see, God has put everything in place for us to be victorious. Difficulties will come. Opposition will come. But it's how we respond to it. That's what is going to make the difference. We can either give in to it and say, well, it's over now and just give up. Or we can keep pressing into God. You know, the, the, the elders, the leaders of this church, when they were looking for a church building, they kept pressing into God. It, didn't, it wasn't the first building that they saw that was the, this one. They went to different places, they fasted, they prayed, they went to different places, there were disappointments along the way, but here we are today, we're standing in this building, they were worshipping in this building because they kept pressing in, they kept pressing into God, they kept going back to God with the disappointments, with the failures. You know, there were many people who started with them, but they're not here today. 
they are not here. We've come to the promised land of this new building, but there are some who started, they're not here. They've given up along the way. If you're a quitter, you're not going to get the best that God has for you. I'm I, 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 sorry to say that, but that's the truth. If you're a quitter, if you can't take adversity, if you can't persist, if you can't push through, if you're not a fighter, if you're not a warrior, you can't get the best out of God. God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And he's looking for those who will always trust him, who will always believe him, regardless of the opposition, regardless of the difficulty that they face. And that's the exciting thing about God. You know, he, I think that, that, can you imagine if you were a Liverpool supporter or player that day? I mean, you would have gone to the depths of despair, thinking we're going to be, we're going to be beaten, but we're going to be beaten very well as well. We're going to be disgraced, humiliated. So to go from that low point, to the high point of winning the game. Man, that is excitement. And that's what God wants to do. You see, the problem is sometimes we're in that low point and we think that's the end of it. But that's not the end of it. You know, that's the point. God wants us to... There, there's the, there, sometimes you might think you're in a low point and then God will take you even lower and lower and he'll keep taking you down to the point where you think it's not, this is the end of it. And then when you get there, that's what he's going to bring you up. Amen. That's where he's going to bring you up. And there's a reason for God doing that because the time is coming when God is going to bring people into this church and they are, are going to be at that low point maybe where you are now, maybe where you're going in the future and you're going to have the testimony you know, every, from that day in Istanbul whenever a football game was going on it didn't matter what the score was at half time they'll be able to tell themselves, remember Istanbul remember Istanbul, don't give up, don't give in the game is not over yet and that's what God wants to say about each and every one of us he wants to say, remember Sarah remember Simba when he comes back as a, a multi-millionaire Amen. hallelujah Amen. Hey. When he comes back as a multimillionaire, that when people start coming through the door and they've got visions, they've got dreams, but they're, they're, but they're broken because those visions and dreams have been, they've been denied, they've, they've broken, they've, they're down, then she will say, remember Simba. Yeah. We'll be able to tell them, remember, don't give up. Remember Simba, it's not over yet. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He, testimonies of healings. People are going to come with, they've been sentenced by the doctors. You've got three months left. You've got this month, X amount of weeks left. And they're going to say, remember, the people who are going to have testimonies of healing, there are people who have got testimonies of healing in this church. Hallelujah. Testimonies of healings. God has healed them. And they'll be able to say to remember, remember, remember. And they're going to be testimonies. Broken relationships are going to be restored. God is going to work miracles in our midst. If we will pray, if we will hear his word, and if we will praise him and worship him. So when those people begin to come in, you'll be able to tell them, remember, remember, I've experienced this. I know someone here who has gone through that. I know someone here that God has taken from this place and has lifted them up because they're going to come. God is going to bring them up. First of all, we have to press in to what God wants to do for us. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when you go on to read the end of that, um, that story, it's incredible because the Bible says that um, when God destroyed the enemy, they left all the things that they had brought with them, all their gold, their silver, their jewelry, everything. And they, 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 the Bible said that the, the, the nation, they went there, they plundered, they took all of those things. They went back the first day, the second day, the third, three days, they were going back and forth because there was so much plunder and so much so that the people, they, they named that place the Valley of Blessing. So they went from the place where they were under threat of being destroyed to the place where they went to abundant blessing. That's where God wants to take us to. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're just going to we're going to move into that time of ministry now. So you know this is this is is, is personal. If, if you are here today, we're going to press. I would like to pray for those people who feel that they're already in that place where. It's like it's like the place where Jehoshaphat was when he heard that those enemies were coming against him and he was overwhelmed by that news. If you're in that place today, if you wouldn't mind standing, I want to ask the people who are around you to pray for you. So if you're in that place, you're in an overwhelming situation. If you're not, please don't stand. But if you are in that situation now where you feel that you're overwhelmed by your, your circumstance, if you would like to stand, and I'd just like to ask the people around you to pray. If there's nobody, we'll pray for us. We will just pray for each other. Is there anyone? Okay, there's someone at the back there. Yeah, there's a couple of people standing. So those of us who are not in that situation, if you will please go around the people. So I said, we're all going to do, we're all going to, we're all going to, to preach this message together. So if you please stand. And um, if you're not able to stand because of whatever issue, you don't, you don't have to. But those people who are standing to be prayed for, if you're not standing to be prayed for, if you could just go around the people who are standing to be prayed for. Sorry, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit of a persister. I might have to move some of you around. Sorry. <laughs> so those people who are standing, there's someone standing here, someone standing there. 
Hallelujah. Yes, the more the merrier, the more power that's released. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Those who are standing, yes. Thank you, Jesus. You just begin to pray for them now that God is going to break through in their lives. Just begin to pray for them. Now, don't, don't, please don't mumble because I tell you, God is here. The Spirit of God is here. And the words that you speak, there's power released through your words. So if you stand and you lay hands on those people and you pray for them, God is going to begin to intervene in their situation. God is beginning to, begin to break through in their situation through your lives because the ministry is in our hands. Now, the miracles are now in our hands. Hallelujah. Just begin to pray for them. Begin to release. God's anointing upon their lives right now in the name of you begin to pray that God himself will come down and intervene in their situations in the mighty name of Jesus Lord our eyes are upon you in these situations oh God where we have need of healing Father God we have need of breakthrough in our lives oh God financial breakthroughs we need you to come Lord God and move mightily in our midst Father in the name of Jesus where eyes are upon you Lord we look to you right now Father we raise our voices our hearts our hands to you on behalf of our brothers and sisters right now Father in the mighty name of Jesus and we pray come and prove yourself Lord come and show yourself who you are the mighty God the awesome one the one who rules over the nations oh God oh we lift our voices to you oh God we cry out to you because you are the living God you are not deaf oh God you hear our prayers you hear our cries Lord and we are asking you to come right now come in your power come in your mercy oh God come in your compassion Lord Come, Father, we ask you, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just begin to thank him now because he's answered our prayers. Begin to thank him. You are a good God. You are a faithful God. Thank you for answering the prayers. Thank you for bringing the healings, oh God. Thank you for bringing the breakthroughs, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for financial miracles right now that you've released for your people, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for those relationships that you've healed and restored right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the restoration of your vision in our lives, oh God, your plan and your purpose for our lives, oh God. Thank you, Father, because you are good and your mercy, oh God, endures forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I bless your name, oh God, and give you honor and give you glory because you are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just going to ask the worship team to come back. Now we're going to do the worship part, the words. We believe God for the words to come. I just wanted to, to encourage you as we are pressing into the new year for the word of God. You know, God has told me this next year. He says, my favor is on you. That's on me. Ah, I said, God, I receive that in the name of Jesus. Favor. You need to receive that word. When that word comes, it comes with power. You know, in 2007, this lady I've never met before, she came, the, the worship team can come forward, please. The worship team. She came to me. I've never met her before. And she just said to me, she said, the Lord said that good things are coming your way. And I've never met her before. I said, yes, I just receive it. Good things are coming my way. Whoa, hallelujah. I just received it. I wasn't waiting for her to be feeling good or anything. I said, yes, I received the word. That year we sold our house. That year we sold it for like five times what we paid for it. We moved to Ashford. We bought new, I mean, good things. They just kept coming. They were just coming from left, right, center, all over the place. Good things. And that just came from a simple word from someone who says, good things are coming your way this year. Wow. Power. So when God says, my favor is on you, I said, yes, Lord, I receive it. You need to receive that word. It is power in the word of God. There is power in the word of God. I cannot say it enough. God is mighty. He's awesome. He's great. And he knows exactly what we need. You know, earlier we sang, we were singing those two songs, Elvis, the one about the rock that is higher than I. Fantastic. The other one, the R, 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 R one, yes, those two, they were just glorious, you know. And there, was, there, were people, there were people dancing here. And you know, Pastor David has taught us about the different ways we can express our praise and our worship to God. So whichever way, whichever way now, freedom. There's freedom in this place. There's liberty in this place. You know, when that, those singers went out before the army, God began to scatter the enemies. He began to destroy those enemies. This is supernatural. It's spiritual. God does it. When we worship him, he begins to defeat our enemies on our behalf. All those enemies that seek to push us back, to hold us back, he begins to bring destruction and confusion into their midst. So as we just uh, begin to worship him and we begin to praise him, just be free, just worship God, give him all the glory and you will see, you will come and testify of the great and mighty things that God is doing in your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.